Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily UPSC MCQ series mission 2020 we are taking here 11th of July it is and uh, current affair based questions we are discussing every day and one more thing some people were saying that uh, some questions are not from current affairs so some are from static portion but you see uh, the questions that you are finding as uh, not in current affair list those are much more important because these are derived questions so they have the context uh, in the current affairs section and they have the link with the static portion or some other information so those are much more important questions so every question is of upsc level and is a very very important and i'm trying my best to give you the maximum uh, a core information that is available so 11th of july it is and pocket news app is trending on number one you can download that on uh, google play and uh, the important courses affordable courses by study iq these are going on geographical uh, geography optional course is also available there so below the video all the description is given there and you can call on these numbers you can visit the website also the chat section is available there pdf you will get here on this uh, facebook page of mine where the telegrams link is also given this is the telegrams link and you can follow me on instagram too first question india ranks second in global milk production after china you see in many areas uh, china leads the production but in the area of milk production we are the first 18 states are there in this country who are leaders in milk production so gujarat punjab haryana uh, these are the states uh, leading states and india is first in the global milk, pro milk production so this is wrong second department of animal husbandry is launching this uh, uh, national dairy plan first phase and the world bank assistance is there so this is perfectly correct this is a central sector scheme and uh, the fund is going to be coming from uh, center and the ida mainly so it's not a sponsored scheme this is wrong only two is the cor correct option here c is the answer you see there is a world bank group and five important agencies are there so idea is one of that uh, i will talk about that before that uh, uh, the production is getting a growth rate of 6.62 per year so that's a major achievement there first in global milk production india is but the per capita consumption is very less 375 grams per day only we need to raise it uh, at least double of this amount so uh, 592 grams per day we are targeting till 2324 and in the next five years so uh, that is the thing that we want uh, some improvement here in the per capita consumption means every person takes uh, 592 grams per day milk that's the case and it's a central sector scheme central sector means 100 percent funding from the center central sponsored sp scheme means there would be a share in the center in the state so idea is uh, uh, giving a lot of uh, fund here idea uh, we have been the biggest beneficiary of idea international development association it is actually a part of uh, world bank group and it gives soft loans means uh, very less interest rate very nominal interest rate or maybe without any interest rate they give long-term loans so that's the case and 18 major milk producing states will be focused here and you see there would be end implementing agencies eias why because uh, uh, on the ground level in these villages blocks and all uh, in small towns there are these uh, dairies and uh, uh, cattle and animals are available they are not there in the urban area so that's the case so that's why this a national dairy plan first in 18 states not in all the states that's important and EIAs, these are going to be the EIAs. You can read that into PDF and these are the objectives here. Next question, again from an important scheme, Mahila Kishan Sashakti Karan Pariyojana, MKSP. I told you about that particular scheme and as I told you, uh, it is not the Ministry of Agriculture. Although it talks about the agriculture sector, they are taking um, uh, female, female as uh, uh, Kishans and uh, it is exclusively for female candidates and uh, they become a uh, progressive farmers so that is the aim but it is the sashakti current pariyojana in the livelihood sense and uh, if we talk about the livelihood then what is important the deen dayal antyodaya yojana is important and the rural component of it national rural livelihood mission so uh, this scheme is uh, by ministry of rural development as we all know and uh, this is the rural component of it day has an urban component also and that is run by ministry of housing and urban affairs okay so that's the case so here uh, this uh, kisan sashaktikaran pariyojana is the component of day nrlm only and that means it comes under the ministry of rural development so uh, this is a wrong statement second it's a right statement because as i told you it's a part of it's a subcomponent component of nrlm only nrlm with this name nrlm it was launched as rgvk in 2011 and in 15 they added deen dayal antyodaya yojana to it so that's a very important livelihood scheme and antyodaya means the last mile connectivity and the progress of the last mile 
पर्सन पुअरस्ट ऑफ द पुअर पर्सन ठीक है सो द एंसर वुड बी ओनली टू बी इज द एंसर यूर Uh, you can uh, read all the issues uh, regarding this particular uh, uh, scheme and how it is being run this dindyal antyodaya yojana started with the urban affairs ministry then this uh, rural component al- also came nrlm and uh, uh, these things are going on across the across the different governments there so it started way back in 2011 and it is going on many updates we have seen next dragonfly mission regarding this mission also i told you and i explained to you the issue of a titan moon of saturn it is the second biggest moon after ganymede of uh, uh, that jupiter planet so it is bigger than mars first of all it's huge and near the north pole of it they have found many hydrocarbon lakes not the water lakes hydrocarbon lakes and so uh, there is a possibility that uh, any life form can be there or if it is not there there may be many clues that how the life started because that looks like the uh, the earth's uh, uh, primordial soup uh, which was there in the starting of the life on the earth so that's why uh, this titan moon is very important for us and we need to do a lot of research here so this dragonfly mission it's actually a drone unmanned drone and uh, it will be taken there vertical take off vertical landing would be there on that uh, titan moon and a lot of great and interesting information it would bring here these two planets jupiter and saturn biggest planets and jovian planets as we all know and uh, made up of gases but they are huge sizes huge uh, 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 volumes and all they are very very interesting and very mysterious also we do not know much about these planets and these moons they can give a lot of information cassini was the spacecraft uh, sent for uh, saturn planet but we have not landed on these planets till now it's very difficult it is nearly impossible till now and next uh, as i told you it's a unmanned solar powered it is not a solar powered drone because uh, saturn jupiter these are very far away planets in solar system so the sun's energy uh, is not that much available there so these solar panels cannot produce that much, that much energy uh, to power these drones so nuclear powered this would be okay so that's a uh, important thing and second is wrong and as i told you there used to be a titan saturn system mission by nasa but dragonfly is not a component of it it actually replaces this mission so that's important and uh, dragonfly is related to saturn or maybe titan directly specifically and cassini spacecraft is also related to saturn so these are important both are wrong statements and uh, d none is the answer here you can see it is the real picture of titan means it looks like that greenish planet and these are the lake region and uh, uh, these may be hydrocarbon lakes and anything can be possible uh, that it, it may found it's a artistic imagination of this uh, dragonfly mission and uh, it it will look uh, very similar to it but it's not the actual picture here so that's the thing is just for the explanation and uh, new frontiers program is going on new horizons uh, was a very specific one uh, which took the pluto's heart shaped picture and uh, these all things are finding new horizons in the space look at the condition minus 290 degree fahrenheit is the temperature there so very harsh conditions and uh, very unique places these are in the solar system next recently news regulatory consistency assessment program rcap rcap actually uh, the issue of banking is very specific and global standards uh, uh, are being imposed actually indirectly and they are trying that the uh, business of uh, finances or the banking sector that becomes global it is very much uh, supportive also but uh, many issues uh, remain uh, there because it is not all the positivity positivity regarding the universalization of the banking or the global banking it is not the case because in 2008 crisis we were safe because our rbi standards are very uh, strict and already we were following very strict measures we were not giving loans to uh, people very easily so that's why you were safe but it was not the condition like today nps were not there at that time if today the 2008 crisis happens then we would be devastated uh, like other any other countries uh, who got devastated in 2008 recession so that's the case so rcap is related to global standards for the prudential regulation of banks we have heard about the basel norms basel 2 norms are going on in this country so b is the answer here and uh, uh, it's a important component of basel's committee only rcap or rcap we can call it anything and uh, uh, 
assessment focused on the completeness and consistency of the domestic regulations in force on 7th of June 2019. A lot of things are going on in the banking sector, globally and domestically both. Many issues are there. So these are very, very important details. And Basel is a city in Switzerland. We all know about that. And uh, uh, the guidelines are going on. The Basel first uh, norms came in 1988 and we implemented them in 1999. Now, uh, Basel 2 are going on and uh, those were published in 2004 and next Basel 3 that came in 2010 but still in India Basel 2 uh, are going on. Basel 3 is not uh, uh, yet adopted. So that's the case. So next question is regarding Maritime Anti-Corp Corruption Network. Maritime Anti-Corruption Network MACN. You see it was a news uh, it is helping actually Indian ports to uh, uh, develop the sustainability, uh, sustainability there and uh, there must not be any corruption in those ports because those are very unique places where trade is going on and these are the places uh, where utmost level of integrity should be maintained so to check that integrity of ports MSN is working it is not established by UN Secretariat this is wrong and it is not an intergovernmental network this is also wrong uh, many companies they have established here and uh, uh, in 2011 it was established and it is working for the business uh, of uh, social responsibility bsr bsr is the principal main principle there so that's the case so both are wrong statements d none is the answer you can see it was established in 2011 by small group of committed maritime companies and uh, over 100 members globally are there and anti-corruption principles are important and best practices they are finding for the sustainable business processes and as i told you uh, it's a member led initiative operating under bsr that is the business for social responsibility so they are working in the area of sustainability because the uh, hot talk in this world today is that uh, all the business processes all the methods that we are adopting these should be sustainable otherwise uh, our future is in danger so any business we run we, that should be sustainable and the practices should be uh, inclusive and sustainable uh, uh, these are the basic principles so that is the case next bt cotton and, and bt bringer a very unique and important question for you listen carefully these are two uh, genetically modified crops permitted for cultivation in the country you see in 2002 bt cotton came and in 2010 after many many problems they put a moratorium on bt cotton because uh, these are genetically modified crops so genetically modified means uh, we have changed the nature here some manipulations are done to achieve some changes in their uh, genetic setup so bt cotton remains the only crop till now that is permitted for the cultivation and uh, uh, many updates we are getting regarding that so bt brinjal is not allowed till now so this is a wrong statement only bt cotton is allowed next what was the issue bt is bt means bacillus thuringiensis and it's a bacteria and we have got a, a particular quality that it can counter the ball worm which actually attacks cotton so it uh, defies the impact of a ball worm there so we do not need any uh, pesticide or something like that uh, for bt cotton now one issue uh, uh, came further what was that some weed that grows uh, with the cotton crop we need to remove that weed otherwise it takes up the nutrition then what we have to do here uh, maybe some options are there like uh, we can uh, employ some people there to remove that weed from the uh, area from the field but that's an expensive method it will raise the cost there second option is we use herbicides there herbicides they kill those herbs but they, these are poisons and they uh, bring a lot of dangerous impact on the cotton crop also so uh, cotton crop gets uh, uh, a huge negative consequence here a huge negative impact there so what to do now if we all stuck we cannot employ people and we cannot use herbicide so this was a great improvement here stbt cotton scheme these are actually unapproved genes in india and they are not permissible in, in india this is a wrong statement these are not permissible but what they do they actually are tolerant to these herbicides means the negative impact of herbicide will not be there on the cotton crop so this way we can save the production at high level so that's the case so uh, uh, stbt cotton is a genetically modified crop and now because it is not permissible in, in india it was grown in haryana and in some areas so uh, there was a, a legal issue and now they are gonna check it the teams are reaching up to there and uh, many other civil society groups and uh, ngos and all uh, these are uh, talking about this issue it's a very very uh, sensitive issue ipr issue is there and um, the foreign companies uh, they put a lot of pressure here 
because they say that always we do these researches and all and it's very expensive ecosystem for us and we support the researchers and all and countries like india whether it we talk about the generic medicine or the uh, other gmo and, and all they uh, take these things and they start using them without any constraint and uh, uh, they do not to they do not want to give us that uh, demanded price there so that's the issue and that's why they go with all these uh, legal issues recently the issue was there in maharashtra regarding the potato so that was also a patented variety so that's the case so uh, both options are wrong here d is the answer okay all the details are given where it is going on what is the issue and why uh, this became an issue and uh, uh, which way we are using them what are the regulations there why we should not use it why we should use it and uh, that's the case next indian army has placed an order for pro procuring anti-tank spike missiles spike missiles are for sure anti-tank missiles we have nag mis uh, nag anti-tank missiles in india and uh, now these missiles are not going to be developed by drdo or russian russian agency this is a wrong statement we are procuring them from israel it's a israel's anti-tank spike missile so it is correct but this is wrong okay first only one is the correct correct option here and uh, the detail as i told you it is uh, israel country from where we are procuring it next duti chand a very proud moment for india 23 year old uh, uh, a girl from india from odisha it is not uh, she is not from kerala and it, it's a opportune uh, issue because first time in the global event in 100 meter sprint race we are winning a gold medal there and the record is uh, 11.32 seconds for 100 meters so it was a 100 meter race where she won this uh, uh, title in 30th summer university games held in naples italy so this is not the 200 meter event this is wrong she has won a uh, silver medal in 200 meter also in asian game but uh, this time it was 100 meters race and first time we are winning this global medal there a gold medal there so this is also wrong this is also wrong dean is the answer here uh, you can see she became uh, famous for her uh, a bold uh, narrative regarding the homosexuality she says she openly admits that i am a homosexual and i'm proud of that thing and i will not change my stand regarding that so uh, she is a brave girl also and this makes it very very important and now she has proved all the haters there and uh, she defied all these pressures she was trolled badly on the social media and uh, she is duti chan and we should salute uh, this uh, uh, lady there she has beaten uh, all the uh, record uh, bearers and you see you, you uh, look at her height and look at these people these, these are so muscular uh, uh, girls and uh, their physical stru structure is very strong but uh, she won it and she proves to be the the hardest one there so before her himadas was the winner she was also a very uh, brilliant athlete and a very effective athlete and she also hails from uh, sorry she also came from a very conservative environment without any support she defied all these things so she won a gold medal in 400 meter race in world junior athletic championship in 2018 so this was a great thing she won a gold medal there in the uh, 400 meter race but uh, Duti Chan won it in 100 meter. So it was the record 11.32 seconds and she became the first Indian to win a 100 meter gold in global event. Before that in Asian games, 100 meter and 200 meter. So it was an Asian competition, not a global competition. And uh, she is the only second Indian track and field athlete to win gold in a world universite. You see before her, Indrajit Singh is the gold medalist in short put. So that was a different event and hers were the sprint race. So that makes it very, very important. Usain Bolt, you, you must have heard about. Usain Bolt is the uh, major athlete uh, there in this uh, sprint race and uh, from India now, Duti Chand. Next, IRSED, India-Russia Strategic Economic Dialogue. That was established in 2018 and the first summit happened in November 2018. And it was the bilateral summit between these two countries and they signed the MOU there and it was MOU between Russia's Ministry of Economic Development and Niti Aayog especially. So uh, this is correct. Second, it is the second meeting, meeting that recently happened in New Delhi. This is wrong. First happened in St. Petersburg in Russia only. So only one is the answer here. And these are the six core areas and other uh, parallel round table meetings are also going on. So that is the, uh, that is the important thing. And uh, 
it was uh, uh, during the 19th edition of annual india russia bilateral summit when they signed this mou and they established this irsed so that's important next world health organization who it has its own standards and it says that on 1000 people there must be at least a doctor the ratio is 1000 is to 1 we all know that but regarding the healthcare workers professionals what is the standard there what it uh, uh, refer to it refers to 12 22.8 number of people for 10000 population that's the standard and it was discussed there when a report came by iips gurugram and they said that in india the numbers of healthcare workers are adequate and that was a uh, kind of a shock to me because uh, it's very hard it's very hard for me to believe this thing that india has adequate number of health workers it's a strange thing but these days this is the time that uh, whatever you see on the ground that is not important whatever whatever what is the official data that's important so they say that our estimate is around 29 per 10000 people and 38 uh, uh, per 10000 population based on registration data so that is way above than the 12 22.8 suggested by who standard so that is the data and we'll meet again tomorrow with many more questions thanks a lot keep watching and please give me your feedback also regarding these questions what uh, do you think about the standard of the questions and the detail regarding that thanks a lot keep watching it was amazing